Hi, and thanks for tuning in to my infertility journal entry number one. Just wanted to come to you guys with a quick timeline of what we've gone through so far. My husband and I have been married for over five years, and we had begun trying to conceive immediately, and it just wasn't happening. So um, we started with him getting a semen analysis done, and his results came back extremely high, like through the roof in the millions. So I decided to make an appointment with my OBGYN, and she did an ultrasound as well as a pap smear, and I came back all clear. Um, she did tell me that one of my hormone levels was almost double the other, so um, she said it was a classic sign of polycystic ovarian syndrome. So after some further testing, um, that's what I was diagnosed with, and I was put on um, metformin 500 milligrams twice a day to stabilize my hormone levels so when my hormone label hormone levels were stabilized we um, went to a reproductive endocrinologist and RE fertility specialist in North Carolina we had an IUI done and unfortunately it was a failed cycle I never conceived so after that we had an HSG test done and the test did reveal that both of my tubes were blocked um, at the fimbria ends of the tubes um, you know the part that actually sweeps the egg up to allow the egg and sperm to me is the part that was blocked you know with me um, so the doctor basically like right after the procedure was trying to get me to consent to have my tubes removed um, and move forward toward IVF so I'm like you know IVF is pretty expensive but I didn't think that it was you know too much more than an IUI I was thinking maybe it was like three or four thousand dollars so I'm like, okay, well, how much is it? She's like, $12,000 is what we typically charge. And I was like, huh, what? So first of all, you just told me that I would never be able to conceive on my own, which was like a crushing blow. Then you tell me that I need to have my tubes tied, cut, or taken out. So now you're telling me I'll never, ever have a spontaneous conception. Then you hit me with $12,000. You know, it, it was so much to deal with at that time. I remember crying like a baby. I was crying so hard. You know, it, it, it was devastating news to me. Um, so I was telling her that I didn't feel like I should be signing anything because of the mental state that I was in at that time. You know, my husband wasn't allowed in the room with us for the procedure, but he did join me after the procedure, after I was dressed and everything. And he said, no, I think we ought to pray on it. Let's touch and agree and we'll call her back. So I'm like, okay. So we went with that. And um, I went home and I started looking, you know, at some other, you know, some information about IVF. And I found a lot of YouTube channels. Well, I came across um, two specific channels where the ladies had some uh, mini IVFs done. So I Googled mini IVF. And it came, you know, most of the studies that I saw was that it was between two to six thousand dollars cheaper than a regular cycle of IVF. So I'm like, oh, okay, let's see how much, you know, that fertility clinic will do um, that cycle for. So I called them up, and they're like, no, we don't do many IVF. When we do IVF, it's all or nothing. So I'm like, well, dang, you know, how am I supposed to be able to afford this? So I decided that maybe I need to look for a different fertility clinic. So I did um, find another fertility specialist, and I'll discuss with you guys later on in the video how I went about finding one. Um, and they do offer the mini IVF for around $5,000 um, per cycle. Um, so what our first step is going to be is to have a lap done. And a lap is going to determine if they're able to unblock my tubes, um, because if they are, then they will. Um, now, if they're not able to unblock my tubes, they will cut, clamp, or um, tie them off so that, because the tubes are filled with, um, I think she said distilled fluid, um, and they said basically if I ever did have a successful pregnancy, that fluid could spill back into the uterine cavity, and it would be like a spontaneous abortion or something like that. So to prevent, um, you know, a termination of pregnancy, you know, possibility, um, that's what our uh, next step is going to be. Um, so as soon as I get that procedure done, I'll go ahead and update you guys and let you know, you know, how things went and um, what our next steps are going to be and what, you know, the results. Um, until then, I guess that's all, guys. Um, to those of you who got your BFPs and are who are pregnant and 
you know, getting ready to deliver some healthy babies. Congratulations. And for those of you who had some setbacks, my heart goes out to you. I'm praying for you. Just find some strength somehow, some way. Um, and prayerfully in 2012, we'll all be, you know, mothers or mothers to be or close to it, you know. Um, until then, I guess I will talk to you later, guys. God bless and take care. Thanks for watching. Hello again. I know a lot of you are already aware of this site, um, but for those who are not, I just wanted to introduce it to you. It is the Society for Assisted Reproductive Technology. You can find it at SART.org. And the SART is an affiliated society to the American Society for Reproductive Medicine. Um, this society is an organization that provides you with the majority of the United States fertility clinic success rates. So if you're ever just looking for one or you want specific information about one that you just, you know, happen to have heard about or pass by, this is the site um, that I would go to. So when you type in SART.org in your address bar, this is going to be the first screen that's going to pop up. So you would go down here to where it says IVF success rates reports and I apologize that it's blurry because this is my cell phone I'm recording on. So the next screen that you're going to uh, come to is going to ask you for your zip code and how many miles you would be willing to travel for treatment. So I went ahead and I put in my zip code and I typed in 150 miles. So your next screen that pops up is going to pop up with the fertility clinics in the area um, that you specified in the criteria on the previous page. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and click on that first one um, and because this is just for informational purposes. Now the next page is going to show you their contact information, their address, um, some names, some uh, phone numbers, fax numbers, and then you'll see where it has a website. And the majority of these um, websites you know, once you click on here, we'll give you like an, an estimate of how much their in vitro fertilization program costs and what kind of programs that they offer. Some offer the mini IVF, natural IVF, full cycle IVF. So you would click on that to get specific information about that. Where I like to start at is the ART data report, the assisted reproductive technology report. And where it says click here is where I click. The next screen that pops up will let you know, it'll give you a couple of different age groups on the top, and it'll basically tell you the fertility, how many cycles they've done, of the cycles that they've done, how many successes that they had, um, if there were any cancellations that affects the success rates, um, if there were any twins or triplets or multiples, it gives you the average of embryos transferred, gives you a lot of information about that clinic specifically. So you can look at this and say, well, wait a minute, their success rates are not really where I want them to be. Let me go ahead, hit the back browser and choose something else. Um, and you know, you won't have to waste your time calling them and you know, finding out the hard way. So you, um, if you want to know specific diagnosis um, information, um, basically what I mean to say is there's a, a tab here that says select diagnosis. So you can go ahead and select what diagnosis um, you have as far as why, you know, you're having trouble conceiving. I'm going to put mine in the tubal factor infertility. So the next screen that pops up, it lets me know, okay, I would say this is my age bracket right here, 35 and under. So they've done 11 cycles for people with my condition. Of the 11 cycles, four uh, women went on to successful pregnancies. Then I would scroll on and look down here and I would see that one had a cancellation. So it would really be four out of 10. Basically, it just gives you a lot of information um, and it'll help you to decide what clinic um, that you would want to go ahead and contact next so you won't waste a lot of time and um, a lot of effort. 